got all the paperwork. Larry's called. Nice to meet you. Good afternoon. Oh, thank you. You know, this is, this is nice weather still. <laughs> as long as you're not out working it, there. It, it has been worse in other places, so. I wasn't going to do any gardening today, so it's okay. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like our, this is quite normal for February. My, uh, it's true. Where, where we bank, they put up a little thing on a little whiteboard every, every day, a new thing, and I guess the record low is like 153. <laughs> and our, and, uh, Ouch. Antarctica. <laughs> nice. Then we don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> Eleven below. Pfft. Yeah. Mm. Okay. How's the show coming? Let's have some of your. Yeah, I was over doing a voiceover at um, <laughs> Absolute uh, oh, Video Arts. Yeah. And I was like, those are nice. I like that. Some of that in my house. <laughs> All right. How's it going for you, Tim? Not too bad. Yeah. How about you? Hi. Hey, I want to go see the shows we can, but my wife's. <coughs> what? <laughs> so she you should come anyway. I'm going on Friday. I should. should like, sit behind <laughs> That'd be awkward. We're going on Friday. Yeah, weird third wheel. Are you? Like, yeah. You are also coming on Valentine's. We are. <laughs> Let's see, we're good to go. All right. I think we're about all ready. Is everybody here? Okay, we'll go ahead and begin. I'll go ahead and call the meeting to order for our February 12th, February 12th excuse me, City of Moorhead Arts and Culture Commission meeting. It's 4.30 p.m. And uh, before I begin, uh, one of the first things on the agenda today is we want to welcome our new members, uh, Larry and Jeremiah. He's unable to attend due to weather. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Welcome, well, anyways, Larry. welcome, Larry. And can you tell us a little about yourself, just so with the city? <laughs> and mind you, this is, goes out public. So, um, what you do and how you who you represent, that sort of thing. So. Oh, I, I'm a, a council member in Ward Three, just elected a special election, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm a retired educator. And uh, this is my my second go around on the city council. I did it 20 years ago, and now I'm back. So. Yeah, but this this uh, commission didn't exist back then, and so I think it's pretty. I'm I'm happy to be on this one. Thank you. Great, great to have you here. Great to have you here. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about my tenure here at the end of the meetings. We'll save that for the end. In the okay. Back. So um, let's skip ahead then. Um, oh, and actually, we know anything about Jeremiah? Can you give us anything? Anybody know Jeremiah Jones or? Don't know, do we? I think he, when they had the special election, I think he might have been a candidate at that time. Okay. I think that's all I know. But I, I could be mistaken, but that's okay. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. All right. Well, moving forward, uh, any agenda amendments for what we have for today? No. Okay. In that case, we need to take a moment to approve our minutes from our last meeting, November 18th. December was busy. January, we had not a whole lot of things to move forward with, and so here we are today. So it's been a little while. So we take a second to review our agenda from no our meeting minute, excuse me, from November 18th. And let's see. Mm -hmm. so motion to approve. Anyone? We'll make it. We make it. Very nice motion. Second. I second. Oh, Gary. Gary okay. Have it. All those in favor of approving the agenda minutes, uh, approve, approve the minutes from November 18th, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes pass, and then we move forward now. At this point, uh, I'd like to have, ask if there's any citizens to be heard. <laughs> Seeing no, no, sorry. <laughs> okay, hello, howdy, stranger. Uh, come on down here, introduce yourself, and uh, what would you like to discuss? Would you like me to sit? Sure, sure. sure. Mm -hmm. Hello, um, my name is Sue Leggett. Um, I am here today to share with you an event that we are working on. Um, I'm, I'm sharing this information on behalf of the currently being formed new potentially nonprofit group Moorhead Arts Council. 
Um, the goal of this group is to act as an advocate for the local creatives in the city of Moorhead, possibly um, bring in opportunities like presentations by Springboard or assist with networking events, grant writing workshops, whatever. But um, while that happens throughout the year, we want to have one annual event. And so this is hopefully the first annual, although that's kind of, can't really say that. Um, so it's called Creative Moorhead. It's on May 2nd. And it is open to all individuals, organizations, businesses, schools, whatever, who feel that they are a creative in the city of Moorhead. Um, it is free to participate, and it is free to attend. So it's kind of like a citywide showcase slash studio crawl slash performing arts series slash what have you. Um, we do have locations available, satellite locations available for people who don't have traditional spaces or spaces they feel comfortable opening up to the public. Um, we're waiting to hear word from a few more places that would allow us to have satellite locations for performing arts people as well as visual arts people. And right now we are in the process of recruitment and trying to get people to sign up. So I wanted to come and share with you um, our information. We have an email address. We're working on a very simple website. Tim has a wad already, already stack. Got, yep. already got I've, some. I've been trying to pass them out. So anyway, I wanted to come and share it with you um, and just, yeah, let you, let you yeah. make you aware of what we're working on. So Most of you, I think, have already talked to directly or indirectly in some ways. So. Can I have a stack to Absolutely. take me? Thank you. So <laughs> if, uh, if someone's listening or if they're wondering, okay, say, this sounds interesting. I would like to get involved as a performer, as an artist, as a painter or something. What exactly are you looking for? Then for someone to do something that's an all day thing or like someone says, I have like a 30 minute thing I could do at some point in the day. Yep. Is just to contact you and? Yes, both. From there? Um, so if it is a visual artist, they can choose to open up their own studio or they can present their work at one of the satellite locations. Um, the studio visits will be from 10 to four. This is a Saturday, by the way. So studio visits are from 10 to 4. Um, we would like to have some type of welcoming event beginning sort of thing in the morning. I'm not sure how that's going to come together. And then from 5 to 7, we're going to have a social hour. So all the participants who come, we're going to have an event at the Rourke where they can meet each other, they can talk. Because one of the biggest things we hear again and again is that the creatives just don't know who else is out there. There's people they potentially want to collaborate with or maybe have a mentor relationship with. Um, we just don't know how to meet them. We don't know how to get past, get the foot in the door. So these networking events might help with that. So from 5 to 7, we'll have a social hour at the Rourke. And then we go into the evening events. Um, whether you already have an event on the calendar, we can add that to the schedule and we can be very... Um, uh, symbiotic in our promotion. Um, if it is a small event, like a spoken word, or um, if you even have a small troupe and you want to do a little theatrical performance, we would add that to the calendar so people know exactly when that's going to happen and because it's not going to be an all day mingling in and out type of situation. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The email the email to contact us initially is creativemorehead at gmail dot com. And from there we have a small application. It's a very simple application to fill out and we're asking for a brief description and some examples of the work so that we can promote the event and the people who are participating in it as well. Now, for Art Crawl, I know there's a really big publicity effort that goes out. That's a ma massive, ex very nice catalog, the whole nine yards. Uh, that's, I'm sure you don't have the budget for that sort of outreach at this point, but, but how's the word going to get out and how are people going to find out what's available in the city on that day? Well, for those questions, I divert to Dennis. No. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis and Tim, um, who are commissioners, are also in, on the, um, the Moorhead Arts Council group that's helping to put this together. And Dennis has generously volunteered his time and talent to create our marketing campaign. Um, so do you have plans, Dennis? <laughs> it's, it's a very, very, very short timeline. So the deadline to apply and participate is March 15th. And that gives us a month and a half to just 
get as much of the word out as we can. And, and so, like I said, right now we're in recruitment phase, and then um, hopefully that, you know, that'll, we'll be ready to go March 16th with all the names and everything we need to, to really, <laughs> yeah, to really Excellent. get the word out, so. All right, well, sounds like a great event. Um, I know MSU, I'll talk to you, don't leave afterwards, or you, you have to leave when, we're, when you're done with this presentation. You need a split? Well, Oh, see yeah. how long he Sorry. I need to chat with you about um, MSUM. We've already bounced the idea around how might we be a part of it. And we have some <clears throat> ideas and some things, but we need to talk about um, what would fit within the theme and how it all works. So anyways, but I need yeah. to chat with you about that. So Good. Okay. But anyways, MSUM, Center for the Arts, will definitely should be on the event. Yeah, and it's Concordia's graduating weekend, so they have some events already on the calendar as well. Um, Theater B has some performances. Um, there might even be something at the high school, but I can't remember. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, the whole point of the event is to really shine a light on the amazing talent, both quantity and quality that we have in Moorhead, and just to provide an opportunity for people to to share that with the public. Sure. All right. Sounds wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Are there any other citizens to be heard at this point? All right. In this case, we'll move to the sixth thing on the. Uh, our meeting agenda, annual business, election of officers, designate representatives, and the 2019 annual report. And I'll leave it over to Kim. Tell us how you want to proceed here. Sure. So uh, included is the report that just talks about who were the members, uh, some of the projects that we reviewed and worked on throughout the year. And then, um, because we will be having some changeover, um, Kenyon's term ended, um, but there was not a reappointment. Um, yet, and so he's still able to serve until that occurs at City Council. Um, and so we can elect a new chair and vice chair and then represent representation to our, our subcommittee. So we have our art review team. So if we would have any um, proposals for the um, public art policy, those people would uh, represent uh, Art and Culture Commission on that review, and then there's also a member that represents on the Community Fund Advisory Board as well. So if you have any questions on, on that. Do you want to appoint people to those positions moving forward for the year at this meeting? Is that yes, the plan? Yes. Okay. Um, in that case, I need to advise everyone, just I'll say it now. Um, I'm, this is technically, I guess, my last meeting. Um, I was supposed to be done in, in December, uh, but since no one uh, stepped forward, I have, however, there's a gentleman who has, has been contacted, he has actually applied, and now we're just waiting on um, the city to approve, I guess, for his, so he can officially take over, whatever the... Right, there's a process within the city clerk's office. So there is someone who's going to be here, and it, 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 it's, in, it's in the pipeline. So technically, this would probably be, it should be my last meeting. Uh, that person is Nat Dickey, I mean, you may know him, um, plays a uh, professor of music at Concordia College, great gentleman, lives in Moorhead and will be serving in the at-large position here. Um, the... Uh, one thing I do want to give you a heads up, he was concerned a little bit about the meeting time because he will be serving as chair of Music Department Concordia next year. And I know that apparently Tuesday evenings there seems to be some sort of meeting or dean something that he might have to go to on Tuesdays sometimes. So, and he wasn't, or during our regular meeting time, sorry, whenever those, those are. So he wanted to definitely, uh, before he, he wanted to double check with, with the dates. So I was, before y'all set the dates for the future, you might want to wait till he gets officially installed and then figure out what'll work for everybody because he may have a very interesting schedule. So I just want to say that. Um, but anyways, but he was, he's excited about the idea of the prospect of serving on this commission. That said, um, I think it'd be a good idea to go ahead, could we, maybe we just go ahead and name those positions again and maybe, if nothing else, if I won't be serving obviously, I, so I don't think I should vote, I'll stay out, but I would like to encourage um, basically to make this position, this at large position, maybe go ahead and assign that position tentatively one of these roles for now. And if that person feels terribly uncomfortable, maybe they can roll in or out, but at least give that person a position to walk into from the get go, might be good. So so how do you wanna proceed, Kim, what should we do? So I don't know if you wanna nominate or volunteer, but it, would there be anyone interested in serving as chair? Well, Carrie's already done it. <laughs> done it. So I, yeah. I, so I'd rather not. <laughs> and two people are missing. So um, I guess that leads me and Dennis to. Kind of. Mm. <laughs> kind of does. <laughs> 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 
I, I flip a coin. I've got too much stuff already, so you can. I have a lot of stuff too, and so, but. <clears throat> I'm just trying to think of it. We all have a lot of stuff. We all have a lot of stuff. <laughs> right. So, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. what are the other commitments besides this meeting for chair and vice chair? That's about it. 99% of it is Kim contacting me the Thursday or Friday before the meeting saying, here's the agenda, look it over, does this look good? And I email her back within 10 minutes usually saying, looks great, or what about this? And then, so it's usually a grand total of a, a few, an email or two, and that's, about right. it and then running the meeting so uh, unless you enter into another strategic planning process <laughs> which took a lot of time which took more time <laughs> um, yes. but that was more time for everyone too but that was time for mm -hmm. everybody so yeah. um, at this point things are there's a flow and it is not egregious <laughs> mm -hmm. no no Kim's really uh, on top of everything mm -hmm. I'd be willing to serve Is that a nomination? Does somebody yes, want to? Yes, I nominate Tim Wollenzine. Right. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> right, do we want to? I'd be willing to be vice chair. I'll nominate Carrie as vice chair. Okay. <laughs> so if you second. can, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so if you can't run a meeting, I'll be here to do that. There you go. All those in favor of approving the chair and vice chair position, please say aye. 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 All those against? <laughs> Thanks, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> I shot the dodge that bullet. <laughs> Congratulations. Let's break out the champagne. Um, okay. Other positions that we need to be uh, getting set up for so the year. So we will need two um, members for the art review team. Uh, last year, Tim and Sue served on, on that. Um, we know that we'll have some of the process on our next item, which is the water tower, and we will also have some uh, review of the art benches and the utility box that will also have additional process where there will be meetings where we will, that are not during this time, uh, to review those proposals, um, discuss how that fits with, with our um, public art policy and then make a recommendation that would come here. Hmm. And, it, and now, aside from those two positions, what else needs to be filled from the today? Um, it would also be the Community Fund Advisory Committee, and Carrie served on that, and I'm not sure if she would like to continue or? Community Fund. Um, yeah, I would, I would continue. Is it going to remain at a really early hour of the morning? I, I'm not sure. <laughs> it kind of has settled into that time, but I don't know that <laughs> okay. for sure. That that would probably influence. Um, it's just it's a harder thing for me since a lot of my work ends up being late in the day. Going to a seven o'clock meeting is something that's um, periodically difficult to do. I think uh, those are well since it just pretty much was established last year. I think they've been set up to be quarterly meetings. So right. I, I'm on that committee, and it was, seven, it was 7.30 we met, the MCOM, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I couldn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would be willing, but also if there's someone else who doesn't do their primary work from 7 to 10 or 11 at night, um, they might be a better candidate. Maybe we should wait until our new members are here. <laughs> yeah, we could. We could postpone. Do we want to? Um, do we want to go ahead and then wait for the other two positions? Uh, do we have anything that needs approval in the next month for either of those areas that we need representatives at? I I don't believe so. I I don't know because the review process for the water tower I don't think is at a time where we would um, have the touch base at that time. So no. I think we'd be just fine like to wait. July. Why don't we wait then? Why don't we post a table, I should say, yep. these, um, both of those, uh, all three of those positions, excuse me, to the next meeting and hopefully have um, uh, new, new members in place yep. and ready to roll. So I hate the idea of not, I'm happy not many people aren't here for positions, but <laughs> I don't know if that would be the best choice. So uh, let's wait to do that. So great. Does that sound good? 
-hmm. Okay, let's move forward then. Um, all right, um, annual reports, anything we need to be aware of there, Kim, that stuck out at you that we should be, uh, that particularly draws your attention that's of a concern? I don't believe so. I think it's just a recap of, of some of the 2019 items. Mm -hmm. And we usually just forward via email to uh, city manager and, and council for their, their review and consideration. Okay. All right. All right. In that case, uh, now's a good time. I think we know, I know we have some, oh, quite a few things to cover as well. So with the water tower. So let's move forward then with the water tower art. Um, so where to next? Sure, so I'd like to introduce, we have Lisa Bodie. she's the Government Affairs Director here with the city. Mm -hmm. She's the project lead for the I-94 Water Tower Art. And on our conference call, we have Maxine Adams, who's the Executive Director of Lake Region Art Council. Uh, we are hoping to submit an application for grant funding, so Maxine will be here to hear our conversation and chime in as that conversation. Hello, Maxine, are you there? Yes, I am, hi. Hello. Hi, Maxine. All right. Thank you for joining us and uh, not risking your life today. So glad to have you here. <laughs> well, I appreciate the ability to, to call in. It is kind of cold out there. <laughs> All right. So where to, where to with us? I'll turn it over right. to Lisa to give you a little bit of information. Well, and I'll say that Kim is my partner in um, leading this project, too, and her technical uh, expertise and her experience with previous uh, water towers has been really helpful to this process too so I look forward to that partnership um, the I-94 water tower project is perhaps the largest exposure public art opportunity that we have in Moorhead and you have within your packet the call for artists mm -hmm. that was issued mm, 10 days ago or so mm -hmm. Yeah, about then. And thank you for those that have shared it. Um, our, um, we sent it out through our request for proposals, um, notifications on our website, did a news item on our website, also shared it on Facebook, and 62 people shared it beyond that. And I've seen a lot of people tagging each other and artists coming forward. So it's really exciting um, how far this is going. Um, there's also been some art e communication with art exchanges that have shared it through their networks too. So it's going even beyond our, our local community. Mm -hmm. um, we, you'll note within the proposal that we are asking for um, community engagement on this project. It is, you know, important and essential. Mm -hmm. um, art and Culture Commission members. Um, may remember those of you that have been on the commission for a while that there have has been public art applied to the oakport water tower the woodlawn water tower and there is a design ready to launch for the south side uh, water tower that will be constructed early next uh, beginning next year and that water tower has to be completed prior to the i-94 tower undergoing its rehabilitation and so this project was originally intended to be uh, the art to be developed last year and applied in 2020 now that timeline's been moved a year um, because of the the delay in that process and also it gave the city an opportunity to work through its um, brand narrative mm. and Perhaps that will be an inspiration for the community engagement on the public art for the water tower. So um, this art will also last for at least 20 years. The, the um, uh, old city logo that is on the tower now has been up for more than 20 years. And the art is being developed in conjunction with the rehabilitation of the tower. So it's necessary from a practical standpoint to uh, repaint the tower, and so this is an opportunity. Moorhead Public Service has um, graciously um, included a line item in their budget for the tower for some art application, and the city has identified some resources to match that, and we would very much like to make this a really special project and so we are seeking grant opportunities as well we did start 
the submission of a grant application to Maxine's organization last year. And when we learned that the tower would be delayed, we withdrew that application so that another community that had a project that was ready to go would be able mm -hmm. to move forward. So we did that before the selection was made so that we weren't having to return the funds. So we are excited about that opportunity mm -hmm. as well. We have, um, this is a, a call for artists, not a call for art. So we do want to know who the artists are and a little bit about their work, but we want them to develop the art in conjunction with the community. So the application deadline for this project is March 6th of 2020. And there is also a timeline in your packet. We have to have our final design to Moorhead Public Service um, by September 1, 2020, which seems like a ways away, but I think it'll come up pretty <laughs> quickly by the time we get some public meetings in and go through the various approval processes. Um, I was briefing with you today, um, as you and you were talking with Kim about the um, art review team and there is uh, within the timeline some work with that art review team on art technical and cost refinement and also with the recommendations and approval processes for August of 2020. So that's a, a general nutshell um, summary of where we're at. Kim did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Nope, not at this time. May I ask, so is there a, a process that's in, that's in motion for the new water tower on the south side for, for this as well? The, the art ha was oh. developed, was it last year? Oh, that's Do right. Do you that's remember? Was that last year? You're, You're asking me. <laughs> the one for last year. Okay. It's, it's already done and yeah. it's just waiting to be painted at this point. Right. Sure. Okay. Waiting to be yeah. done, yeah. All right. Great. That one's ready. Great. So that'll be out of how many total water towers we have in the city now? The four. So, be the so this will be the fourth and final out of this four-year project then, basically. Timeline. Excellent. So. Thanks, Sue. Thanks, Sue. Um, all right. Uh, now, at this point, do you need any sort of particular feedback from us at this point? It's more advising of where we're moving forward right now. It's advisory, but if you do have anything you would like to add, we can certainly make clarification with those that are proposing. Yeah. Let me ask a question. Something just struck me, and, and um, if someone were to, an artist team, were to think of something really outside the box, and uh, I'm, I'm looking at this, and I'm not saying something that would be offensive in any way, shape, or form, but in terms of modern projecting abilities, if someone were to go with a lighting design rather than a painted design, how feasible would something like I mean, that is something that would even be a, a pro possibility? I think it would be something that could be considered. We would have to look and recognize that, that there's also daylight hours and oh, whether, yeah. you know, you, you want it to be visible in the daytime as well mm -hmm. as at, the, at, at nighttime. So mm -hmm. I don't know, um, I, I don't know, but I'm sure there's some possibilities and creative minds out there that could think of something. Yeah, just flipping through this and I was thinking, I wonder if someone really, because you're talking about an artist team rather than just simply uh, give, give us a design, you can come up with some really creative people in this community. <laughs> so we think, so that, really we think yeah. that lighting, you know, that there is a, a, we don't know what technical um, complications that would add to have a lighting component, mm -hmm. but it's certainly worth um, evaluating and, and pursuing. Mm. Theater tech guys have some fun. I know. <laughs> there were some really interesting things happening. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Suddenly I'm like, oh, smell of vision. <laughs> like all kinds of things are possible. There you go. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Other uh, comments. I, I love that we're. I feel like it's kind of our. It's funny. It just feels like just uh, when we began this commission, we were just beginning this whole project, and we're like, can we actually move forward with this? And now it's we're kind of on the back end. We're one out of four left to finish. Yeah. And this will be the real cherry on the top most publicly visible, which is wonderful. Um, Maxine, is there anything that you're hearing that you're thinking would be of uh, interest to add at this point? Or? Oh, thank you. I did have a question about the timeline. Which legacy grant round are you thinking of applying in this spring or fall of 2020? I think spring. Um, um, as in the March 3rd deadline? Yep. Okay. 
um, which probably means you have most of the grant written already. Um, there would be then two considerations that I would uh, suggest as points to be sure you had a, a strongly worded application. And those two points would be um, what community need does this public art project address, because that's one of the criteria for that grant. And then to do a very good explanation of how this is art and not just graphic design. Um, and if you've covered those two points, great. Um, but oftentimes in uh, public art projects, sometimes those are the, are the weak points that um, might influence how highly your, your grant is um, uh, judged, mm -hmm. ranked. How so, much? Um, again, Kim and I have, have uh, worked on those issues with the Oakport one too, and um, I would be happy to have further conversations if needed about those. That too. We're, we're here to help you do the best application and strongest application possible. Thank you. Um, Kim and let me Lisa uh, I'm just in terms of the, someone from the outside public looking in I'm seeing it, it says a tentative budget well that not tentative the maximum budget is listed as fifty thousand dollars for adding this artistic component um, and those of you wanting the public the raw painting of the of the um, water tower must be done this is not a this is not a superfluous let's just repaint it because we feel like it project it's up for um, maintenance and that much is being done so the base coat is new it's going to be ready to be painted something fresh on top that'll be nice when when that base coat is finished um, and that overall painting of the tower minus any art is upwards of how much if we weren't to add any art at all it was what I remember it was a big chunk of change right there it, it was a lot I don't I don't remember the precise figure so I mm -hmm. don't want to throw something out there but it right. was a significant right cost. so adding this on to top of it th this is not the this is not the most part of the cost of painting the tower the base coats the actual part that's being done it that must be true. done no matter the maintenance aspect um, and when we're applying for this grant where the plan is to apply for all fifty thousand dollars from the granting source from the region or no how much I'm seeing head nods okay no check. okay the figures sure so we're looking at applying for the local government legacy grant mm -hmm. uh, and that grant is a ten thousand dollar grant okay gotcha gotcha we may also apply for FM area foundation mm -hmm. funding for their um, our their public round is coming up their um, competitive round is coming up very soon for and there is an art category for that grant as well so. All right. So yeah. So looking here, it says about five, uh, roughly five thousand for arts and culture carry forward from our previous budgets uh, to public art I ninety four tower funding um, MPS twenty eight five, and they're they've already signed off for feeling good about that at this point. I, I believe so. That was what they had budgeted for the word Moorhead. Just to have that painted on there. Yeah. So. Boy, it's amazing it costs that much just to get the word Moorhead on there, much less <laughs> a real design. Mm -hmm. well, and we did put criteria, this, is, this will be a little bit different project than the more neighborhood-based water towers because of the speed of traffic and the distance we are from it that, you know, we, we really, this, this is going to need to be a pretty bold design. <laughs> no fine uh, print. <laughs> not, not a lot, you know, not maybe as, as many details, but mm -hmm. also, you know, it's really exciting what, what the possibilities may be. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we think there can be inspiration about, you know, the pride Moorhead has in the community. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Other thoughts aside from helping to spread the word, because we do have the artist applicant deadline here coming up on March 6th, I believe I saw. Yep. So that's coming up very, very soon. And of course, Kim is and Lisa working hard on that grant application itself to help us get that foundation for our funding in place, which is wonderful. Thank you so much for y'all's time and work on that. It's amazing. Um, other thoughts, suggestions, ideas? Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much for being here for us. Thank you, Maxine. Thank you, Maxine. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. It sounds like a wonderful project. I'm eager to see what you have. Us too. <laughs> You'll be able to see it from Detroit Lakes. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Get some of these theatrical lighting people and you might be able to see it from the toilet. <laughs> Okay. Um, in that case, we'll move forward to our eighth item here on our agenda, member reports and updates. Um, are there uh, uh, any reports or updates or even new, new issues that may be of concern on the horizon to think about? Since we do have a little bit of time here, actually, we're, we've gone pretty quick through the agenda. Um, anything that is on the horizon that we should be discussing in the future, Kim, or might have in the back of our minds for next meeting? We've already mentioned the three positions that will need to be assigned next time. So might be thinking about your scheduling and how you feel about those or volunteering that. <laughs> right. I, and I also wanted to extend, if you were unable to attend the downtown planning sessions last week, there's an online survey that you can go to and, and um, add additional comments and feedback. Actually, could we take a second and uh, ask who, who did get to attend one of those sessions last week? Okay. Can I ask? Can I, I want to share with the com com the commission here and the public what your impression was. And first off, which one you attended? Because there were three or four different sessions that went to different locations. And um, and then what your overall impression of, of what the direction was that you were hearing from the group you were with. I went to the placemaking one. Mm -hmm. um, and so we met uh, between M&H and um, Moorhead Ace. And we, we walked the sidewalks to feel how it feels downtown in certain areas, um, understanding what are those constraints for walkability, what would make, uh, enhance the sense of place. Mm. Um, so it was cold, so we, <laughs> we walked quickly to feel the differences of Main Avenue and Fifth Street between the post office and the library, and then when you turn the corner onto Second Avenue South, um, how that feels totally different because the traffic is slower and less of a hustle and bustle and, and kind of how different opportunities and, and constraints for um, ways to improve. I went on the exact same one and it, there was a different feel. I mean, you know, walk along the sidewalk on Main or by the post office and get to the other side. And uh, well, yeah, it was, it was and then even the windows of the buildings, mm. nothing to look at, nothing to, you know, it's just, you just drive by and go. So it was interesting. I went to the one on Wednesday evening. It was basically focused mine, mainly upon the mall here, um, the repurposing, reusing of the space in downtown and, and what it might mean. And we actually went for a sh brief walk just along the side of the mall um, down to the parking lot by the bank and back pretty much. And um, first off, my one thing that, that surprised me, uh, there were around, I guess around 25, 20, 25 people in our group. I don't know how many you had in yours. About that was big. Yeah, we had a fairly large group, I'd guess, and of those, probably four or five of what I consider average Joe citizens. Um, the majority were um, city planners or city area, area architects and people who are interested, who have a background in city planning, be they with NDSU or MSUM, people who have a really strong background in what does it take to make a city interesting and unique and grow. Mm -hmm. And that to me was, I was really inspired by that because sometimes when you hear people making city plans, you, you're kind of concerned it's just the guy with the loudest voice in the room making the plans. And it was great to be listening to people who have studied this as their career saying, you know what we really ought to do? <laughs> and hearing four or five of those people debate it. Yeah. And that was mm -hmm. really inspiring to me um, as they were talking about these ideas and throwing out ideas back and forth. So to me, it, was, it really made me feel like our city's in some good hands in terms of um, people who are not only thinking about these things, but have thought about them. And um, one gentleman especially, I guess the gentleman who's really most in charge for the city was pointing out that they really don't want to design this mall area or even downtown for the next 10 years. They want to design it for the next 20 to 40 years. And that means some really forward thinking things that, like he was pointing out, um, you know, we, we, we have to have street fronts that are visible that, that you want to walk along. And of course, they're going to be remodeling Main Avenue here very soon, the next year or so, actually, they're going to be uh, redoing the traffic. So there's going to be parking on the sidewalks along the side, along the city right over there. So that's going to invite storefronts to then have, because um, right now, when there's just cars rushing by, you don't, people don't feel safe. So they don't want to even put a, you know, a, picnic area or a, a patio area for a restaurant is a waste because cars are zipping by and it's dangerous. But when you have parking along the street, people feel that it's a buffer zone, hence they're more comfortable sitting on the sidewalk and eating or doing what it may be. So all these psychological things that you talk about, and that's already starting to, the groundwork's already starting to be laid for that starting this next summer when they rebuild uh, this big chunk of downtown uh, 
repave and all those things. But the other thing that struck me was he's talking about just modern day parking, how they're really thinking about, um, you know, it's, it's a bit of a laugh right now, but in 10 years, we're gonna see self-driving cars becoming more common. 20 years from now, they're gonna be the de facto car, or 40, 20 to 40 years. And he was pointing out how, if you saw the Hyundai commercial at the Super Bowl, um, anybody, do you guys see that? There was a, a big commercial, Hyundai unveiled at the Super Bowl with how their new car has self-park, and it had the actor, or whatever, park, stick, getting out of his car in the middle of the street, walking away, pressing a button on his keychain, and the car then pulls itself into the really, really tight parking spot and, and goes in right there. So he's so tight that if he were inside, he wouldn't be able to open the door to get out himself. And he was pointing out now we have to plan for the fact that we would say, oh, we need this much room for parking. Well, if you need, I'm throwing out a number, if you need seven feet to park a car safely now with self-parking cars, you'll need five because the cars will be able to pull within two or three inches of each other. And I was like, whoa, that's, <laughs> that's a thought I've never. So they're, they're thinking that type of long-term planning in some of these areas and things. And I, I was really inspired by that, to hear that kind of thought going into our city. So that, that really bowled me over. But, um, and the other thing they're pointing out too, and this is for people that are listening at home, um, we were mostly discussing the fate of this mall area. What, what can it be repurposed? How might it be repurposed? And one of the gentlemen um, was actually a, an expert in environmental studies and uh, uh, architecture, uh, green building green architecture. I believe he actually teaches at Concordia or MSUM or something like this as a professor. And he was pointing out that um, this mall, while in many ways could be repurposed for many things, is one of the biggest problems is it's incredibly energy inefficient. Incredibly, and, and it would literally cost, in, in terms of the payback to tear it down and build something that is up to modern building code efficiency standards, it basically would pay for itself in a very in a much shorter amount of time than people think. Just they, they think, well, that why build it down? That costs more. Well, actually, it's, it's bleeding so much energy every winter. Modern standards would would be a huge cost savings in comparison. Well, I said it was efficient. It's inefficient. Yeah. It's inefficient. Inefficient as it is, because it was it was built in the 70s. Yeah. Literally, as he pointed out, in the 70s, where energy was free. Right. It was basically cheap. So heating was heating was free, and nowadays it's not. So. Um, he was pointing out how that's, that's something that when you tell people in the city of Moorhead, I need to save tax money, well, one of the cheapest things to do would be maybe to tear it down, start over, and use modern standards. It becomes a huge energy savings 20 hmm. years down the road by the time you add up all those things. So, so many factors. To right, right. So, so many things. And it's great. I was just inspired to hear people thinking that far along, which is great. So, and I encourage you, if you're listening, um, if you can, if you hear about these events, and they are all over social media, they're all over the city's web pages all the time, um, please come to them. Your voice is valued, and there was a lot of interesting ideas that are being tossed around, both from the, the quote, um, city experts and the, quote, local experts, as well as the local folks who are just there saying, I've always wondered why we don't have blank, blank over here. What, is that even feasible? How would that maybe work? And uh, it was great to hear that kind of thing going around. So it was good. All right. Good. Uh, member reports and updates. What's going on in the arts in the city for the next month moving forward? Are you kidding? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> February is traditionally very full. Uh, I think we all kind of live on the academic calendar, even if we don't actually work in academic institutions. So we take December, you know, we do holiday kinds of things, then we take some time off, and then suddenly in February, we've rehearsed again and have something to present. I know we do. I imagine the band does. And we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and the symphony. Symphony's going forward, yep. Yep. Um, Theater B is running a show right now. Obviously, a couple of people in the room are coming this weekend. I'm grateful. Um, we are running a show called The Roommate. Um, it's just two middle-aged ladies who become roommates. Uh, a woman from New York moves to a house in Iowa, and at first the two seem to be complete um, opposites, and the woman from New York is definitely a fish out of water. And then as they slowly get to know one another, they both figure out um, some sort of surprising ways to move their lives forward in, in from being kind of stuck. So mm -hmm. it's a reimagining of where their lives are gonna go. Um, and it's super funny, and it's also thought-provoking because that's what Theater B does. <laughs> um, so that's running throughout the month, um, all the weekends, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights, Sunday matinees, um, and this coming Thursday, tomorrow, uh, in honor of Giving Hearts Day, we're saying that you know friends don't let 
good friends miss good theater. So it's a buy one, get one on Giving Hearts Day. <laughs> you want to bring a friend to the theater. Yes. That's it for me. Tim? That's what I do. <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm in the Lake Agassiz Concert Band, and we have a couple of performances between now and uh, the next time this group meets. Mm -hmm. Um, one of them is um, on the 25th of February, and it's in Fargo someplace, I'm not sure where. <laughs> I think it's at North High School. I think so, yeah. And it's, uh, it's a, um, like a joint concert with the Fargo Public Schools High School, I don't know, I don't know how many bands are on the program. We'll do a, a partial a program there and then something together with them. And then we have our regular um, season a concert in March, on the 15th of March at Horizon Middle School in Moorhead. And um, that's all. Dennis, anything? All right. I know the FM Symphony has things. There's a chamber concert this coming Sunday afternoon. Um, I believe it's at the Plains Art Museum, if I'm not mistaken. It's featuring Moorhead art, flute artist Deb Harris and Tom Christians on percussion and some other folks whose name is escaping me right now. Um, I would encourage everybody to uh, check out the Fargo, uh, More Fargo Moorhead Frostable events are rolling forward a little bit every other weekend, I believe. Or is that about wrapped up at this point, Kim? Do you know? Frostable? Or? Not sure. I, I went to a few events uh, week, two weeks ago, and I heard there were others, and it was it was fantastic. The snow sculptures by the Yomcoms, you haven't had a chance to go check those out. Those are always great. And um, so, yeah, there's a whole lot going on in our city uh, when other people are staying home and afraid. The city's not afraid to go out and enjoy <laughs> the arts, which is great, um, with the cold. So, okay. Anything else? All right, if there's no new business or no new items, then uh, we'll go ahead and declare this meeting adjourned. And uh, thank you all for coming. We appreciate your time. Thank you for your service. Thank you.